good.
Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Uh, welcome, welcome to Old Donation Episcopal Church for our uh, Christmas Eve service. It is a blessing to see all of you, and, uh, and we are going to um, have a moment of silence, and then it will be broken by uh, our um, baritone bass, Hunter Enoch, singing, O Holy Night. And after that, we will begin with the gospel according to John. We'll have a moment of silence.
Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please continue standing and we will sing our processional hymn.
service continues in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing Angels We Have Heard on High. you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts 
will do this. The word of the Lord. as you are able and let us sing away in a manger. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger." 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Send your word that we might hear it with our ears, plant it in our hearts where it may take root and grow, and let it strengthen our weak knees that we may have courage to follow Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Amen. So again, Merry Christmas! Yes, what a wonderful, wonderful night. Um, to start off, uh, as we reflect on this evening, I want to start off with a parable that might actually help us understand what tonight is about. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a fisherman who had a wife, and they lived in a very humble two-room cottage. Every day, the fisherman went out in a little boat, and Every evening he came home with something that he caught, sometimes good, sometimes poor, but they always had enough, but nothing more. But the fisherman's wife was never satisfied. Why should I have to live in this dump all the time? Is it too much to expect with the work that you do that we could have a decent home with water, electricity, and a kitchen? I wish only for one thing that I were a proper lady with a proper house. Day after day, the complaining seemed to go on all his life until he became quite miserable. And one day he caught a strange but beautiful fish. And the fish spoke. Please throw me back into the sea, said the fish, and I'll grant whatever you wish. The fisherman thought a little bit and then replied, I have an answer for you. I wish that my wife were a proper lady with a proper house, with water, electricity, and a kitchen. When he returned home that evening, his wish had been granted. His wife was very pleased. But as months went on, she began to grumble again. Why did you ask for so little? Is it too much to expect more than this pokey old house? I wish I were a duchess with a mansion and servants, and a carriage. Why did you ask for so little? Go and ask the fish for more. So the fisherman went back to the same spot, caught the same fish, and the fish agreed to the new request. The duchess was happy, but only for a little while. Within a month, she began to grumble again. I wish I were queen. Go and see your fish again. The fisherman does his trick again, catches the fish, and returns home to a palace more luxurious than he had ever imagined. And it was great for a week. <laughs> I'm sure your fish will understand, but I really meant, I really meant that I wanted to live like God. And on a return from the fishing hole... The fisherman, after leaving his fishy friend, found no palace, no mansion, not even a house, not even his old cottage that he used to have. Rather, as he listened, he heard crying. And noticing a cave in the cliff face, he went closer and there he found two sheep and a donkey <laughs> and a rough manger that was cut out of the stone and a little baby crying. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> the fisherman's wife forgot that God chose to live and come into our life as a little baby. Vulnerable, defenseless, weak, with nothing, with nothing, nothing even to lay God's head upon. The fisherman's wife had her wish. Tonight, tonight we come with all kinds of beautiful music. We come with all kinds of enchanted moments, magical almost. 
If you were here at 5 o'clock, which some of you I know were, you know it was truly magical. The Great Hall was filled with little kids and all kinds of beauty. And when you left that service, it was like you could, you could walk across without even touching the ground. It was just perfect. And it could leave you the impression that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and the rest of God's existence on earth and Jesus was just always so beautiful and easy and something we all want. We all want to live like that until we realize that <laughs> that's not actually the way it was. There's a lot of magic involved in the evening, but Jesus chose. He chose to live with us and take on our existence in the very worst of times, in the very lowest of times. And all the magic that surrounds our celebrations makes it easy to forget the central truth of Christmas, which is that our history has looked a lot like the fisherman's wife, where we live always wanting more and usually never being satisfied with it, and then realizing that what we already had, if we learned how to live with it, was beautiful. That's part of what Jesus comes to say to us. And when we go through this wanting and desiring more and more, it is the essence of pride, it's the essence of sin. As our confessional prayer in one of the older liturgies reads, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. And the angel said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Look at what's going around in the world. Look at the world we have with all the division that we live with, with all the things that are going wrong, wars all over the place, people who are hungry, people who are separated from one another by fear or racism or justice issues because for the most part, we like to have it our way. The angel said, don't be afraid, really? And yet, the truth of Christmas is that Christ has come into this world to live with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And that in itself will break through all the things if we can just learn to live. Learn to live the way God wishes us to live. And learn to live as Christ himself lived. Never desiring more for himself, but to improve the status and the lives of all those who were around. And to give us hope. To give us the ability to imagine a different kind of world. That is what Christmas is. God is with us to work with us, to raise us up, to give us the gifts of hope and not fear. Of course, every once in a while we have problems where we at least can justify in our own minds why we might be afraid. There's a little story some of you have heard before, a little bit of a joke. The cardinal bursts through a closed meeting in the doors in the Vatican and he says, there's good news and bad news I have to share with all of you. And the Pope says, well, tell us the good news first. The good news is God has returned just as God promised. The Pope says, well, what could possibly be the bad news with that as the first? The messenger says, well, God's waiting in the lobby and she's not really happy. <laughs> and yet, and yet, we know if we really understand what the scriptures are all about, God is not coming back angry. Rather, our Eucharistic prayer, one of the ones we use occasionally in Eucharistic prayer, tells the story. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to be our help. 
so that in seeking you, we would find you. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that in the fullness of time, he would be here to be with us to save our life. To be the way that we could find the truth and the life. Because he is the way. God loves this world, you and me. And chooses, despite all the circumstances, to be with us at Christmas, originally and still today. God didn't charge in taking the beach like the Marines might have or someone else. God didn't overpower us or coerce us. Not by threats does He come. He announces His arrival in our midst with the hungry cry of a newborn baby. Not into a life of luxury. Not a duchess or a queen. But rather as a refugee. Escaping the place where he's been driven out of by the government order. In a land that is occupied by a foreign nation who doesn't care. In a town where there is no shelter, even though it is kin, there's no compassion. And so, there's not the magic of our pageant where there's always a comfortable place. Not magic is what Jesus comes into, but reality. The kind of reality you and I live with all the time. And it's been true in the first century, and it's true all the way to today. Today, it's too much like the first century. All of the worst things that Jesus endured, we still are in the midst of. In Bethlehem tonight, they have toned down the celebration. They've toned it down because there is too much fear. There's too much violence in their world, just like all over the world. And when my life and your lives and the world around seems so hard some days, and for everybody, there are hard times. We know that Jesus has chosen to be a, with us in exactly those circumstances. Chooses to be here as Emmanuel. God is with us. So what do we do? <laughs> what are we going to do about all of this? Well, my friend says that there are two different kinds of memory types one is nostalgia. Nostalgia is when you just treasure the past and you wish you could go back and live in the past. But Christian memory is a different sort. It's called proleptic memory. It believes that God gives us the events and the knowledge of what's happening in the future today so that we can live today like we are already in the future. And that fancy 25 cent theological term you can use the rest of your week, proleptic, <laughs> means that you and I have the opportunity to live right today in the very best, to live today like heaven is already here. Because in fact, on Christmas Eve, the veil between our reality and heavenly reality is so thin, you can reach into the next and start to live that way now. Christmas is God choosing to be with us so that we can live with God. And is the gift of hope and courage to change our lives so that the world around us won't be the same tomorrow as it was yesterday. There's a Methodist writer, Steve Goodyear, who uh, wrote about a friend of his who taught high school English that one time around Christmas season, he made the point with Goodyear that how much badly, unnecessarily, un unfairly maligned a name is Ebenezer Scrooge. He said, Ebenezer Scrooge is not the way Dickens meant it to be. Not to be remembered as the Scrooge that we still call him. Yes, Scrooge was a miser disliked by everybody, but the story doesn't end there. Scrooge does not end up dying miserable. He does not end up dying a lonely death. Rather, Scrooge wakes up. And when he wakes up, he changes his whole personality, he changes his whole life, and he starts to live a different way. 
And after this restless night of all the ghost visitations, he decides things truly could be different. And he chooses to be compassionate, generous, and happy. His miserable past does not determine his future. His life story illustrates the words of George Eliot, who said, It is never too late to be what you might have been. It is never too late to be what you might have been. And to this day, the name of Scrooge, which is synonymous with stingy and selfishness, should mean exactly the opposite if we really read the story properly. Scrooge lived the rest of his life as a model of generosity and joy and goodwill. Nobody, it says in Dickens' novel, ever, ever lived and kept Christmas as well as Ebenezer Scrooge. Could we remember that? It's never too late to be what I might have been. Anything can happen if I'm willing to wake up. So with Tiny Tim, maybe, huh? (laughs) And to all of you, a good and Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Amen. And now we'll stand and we'll uh, we'll continue with the prayers of the people. And it will be sung for us and we will have the response that you find in your bulletin. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
So it is wonderful to see all of you. Uh, some of you uh, I, I know are back home, and I'm really, really happy. And uh, so welcome to all of you back to Old Donation tonight. Um, so many good things have been happening around here, uh, but I'll just tell you really quickly what's going to happen in the next few days, okay? Uh, tonight, again, if there's somebody at home that's wondering, uh, we will have basically the same services tonight, again, at 11 with 30 minutes of lessons and carols as a, as a prelude to that, starting at 10.30, the service begins for Eucharist at 11 o'clock. Um, and then tomorrow morning, uh, again, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll have another Christmas service, so Christmas morning at 10 o'clock, that is. And then, uh, and then the office is going to close for a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but come uh, Wednesday and Thursday, the office will be open again Wednesday and Thursday. And if you need me at all during any of the time, you know, you can always call my cell phone. You can find by the answering machine on the, uh, at the church and, uh, and also my email that most of you have anyway already. So uh, contact me. Please let me know if there's an emergency where you need help. We are still ready to respond, okay? Um, next weekend, I want to remind you that next Sunday will be New Year's Eve as well as Sunday, and we will have Christmas services, Christmas 1, the first Sunday of the season, in the morning at 8 and 10.30. Um, at 5 o'clock, we're going to have our tradition that we've been doing for over a decade of, uh, of New Year's Eve worship at 5 o'clock um, with, uh, with some music and prayers of thanksgiving for the year that we've just made it through, and prayers asking for blessings for the year to come. So it'll be, it's a little different service than normal Sundays at 5. Uh, so come at 5 o'clock Sunday, and it will be a New Year's Eve liturgy uh, that we'll do. And as we always do on New Year's Eve, the uh, communion wine will uh, be a little bubbly. Uh, so we always have Prosecco for, uh, for the communion wine on New Year's Eve. So uh, come and be prepared for that too, okay? After the service is over, we have a, a small reception over in Tucker Hall to toast into the new year. And then, uh, and then you get to go home before the crazies get out on the roads. So all is, all is good, okay? Um, other than that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue uh, as business as usual for the most part, and adult formation, Sunday school, all those things will happen back starting in January, okay? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my blood, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, He took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Saint Mary and all your other saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the, ver- the, head of the church, and the author of our salvation, By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, that's us. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
found in your bulletins. Together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the singing of Silent Night. May Almighty God, who sent His Son to take our nature upon Him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of His holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent His angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the Gospel. Amen. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you His peace and favor. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please stand.
to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Merry Christmas.